Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In this Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to personalize your Scan and Cut using vinyl. I'm going to first write Paper Chef, and you're going to write whatever you want to write, your name, your brand, okay, inside a Canvas workspace. Then we're going to transfer that text file. It won't be text anymore, it'll be a cutting file. We're going to transfer that to our machine and cut it out in vinyl. Then I'll show you how to apply it to your machine. Let's get started. I'm using the Brother Canvas Workspace. I'm going to go to Help About, and you can see which version I'm using. So if you're not using the same version, this will be one way to troubleshoot what you're, if you see something different than what I'm looking at. So I'm using version 2.5.0. I'm also using the one that you install onto your PC. If you happen to be using the web-based version right now, you're not going to be able to do what I'm showing you because you can't access the fonts on your computer. I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm using a font called Mrs. To access fonts on your computer, you're going to use this drop down menu. And the fonts are in alphabetical order. So I would, I would scroll all the way down to the M and I'm going to get a font called Mrs. If you didn't understand what I said, I said Mrs. like that. Okay? And I'm going to just enlarge that for you so you can see something. Now this is the only thing that you could type with this font that already looks like it's welded together. As you type other letters, you're going to see that we need to weld our letters together. The Mrs. font is what I've already used on my other machines, and I want to stick with my same branding and the same, the same way I write my, the name Paper Chef. So, first thing to troubleshoot. I get this all the time. I know I'm going to get it anyway, even after I say it right now. You're on YouTube and you're like, Paper Chef, I'm not seeing what you see. I can't access the Mrs. font. Okay, a few things to just note. There is a web-based version of Canvas Workspace. If you're in a browser right now and you see a web address up there, canvasworkspace.brother.com, then you're obviously using the wrong version of the software. You're not. You're using a web-based version. You can't access the fonts from your computer if you're using a web-based version. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing to troubleshoot is, okay, Paper Chef, I, can, I don't have the font. I don't have this font on my computer. I've done other tutorials on how to install fonts. I've, I've actually done a whole entire course on using fonts and it's on Udemy, but that's another story. It'll be linked in the description. What I'm saying is you might not have this font installed on your computer. So that's the other thing you need to troubleshoot. If it's not on the list, you didn't install it. You need to install it. Then you need to restart the software. After you've installed your, after you install a font, any font, it doesn't matter what font, if you install a font, you need to restart the Canvas Workspace software. Okay, and then it will access and it will pull in all the fonts from your computer and it'll show up then on this drop down menu. Okay, if you're using a Mac, maybe that's another troubleshoot. I don't know if this font is for a Mac, but somebody can let us know in the comments. All right, now, with that said, I'm still going to get the questions, but I'm ready for it because I love you guys and I'm ready for it. Okay, I'm going to type the letter P. I'm going to keep that separate for a moment. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, 75%. Okay, so there's my letter P. And the reason I'm keeping it separate is it's not going to be welded with the rest of the word anyway, and it'll help me teach you some concepts. Now I'm going to go ahead and type the rest of the word. A-P-E-R-E-D. Okay, papered. That's going to be, I'm going to write paper chef. Now, you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, that, that's a hot mess. If I were to cut that out in vinyl right now, let me go ahead and zoom in. Uh, let's see, 100, um, 120, okay. If if I were to cut that, this out in vinyl right now, you'd get all these little pieces. All these little overlapping pieces would be a hot mess. There'd be lots of little stickers. Whenever you cut in vinyl or even paper, you want to cut as few pieces as possible, and you want to weld the le weld the letters together in the word. So watch what happens when I do this. Now, I'm going to go over to the Layers menu. And you'll see that I have three text layers. I can go ahead and get rid of the Mrs. Mrs. is the only word that you'll see that looks sort of welded already because that's the name of the font. But when, when, you, write, when you write your other letters, they're, they're going to look like this, more likely, most likely. So A-P-E-R-E-D. I want to weld this. I want to weld these letters together. So I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to go up to the Edit menu, Process Overlap, and Weld. Now watch on the right side that there's layers. There's two text layers. 
One's going to turn into a shape layer. Okay, after I weld this P-A-P-E-R-E-D, paper together, it turns into a shape layer. Notice that. When you, after you turn something into a shape layer, you can no longer use the process overlap weld and extend it, well, you can't use it on the font. I'm sorry, you should, I should say, let me make sure I get this clear. You can no longer edit your font. Is, is that, that's better to say. In other words, this here, the P is still, it's still a text layer. So double click on the P and I could write K or whatever I wanted to write. I'm going to write P again. I can edit this because it's text. It's a text layer. I haven't welded it. I haven't done anything to it. This here is a shape layer. I can do other things to the shape layer, but I can't change the font anymore. I can't type new letters. So if I'm like, oh, I spelled that wrong. Too bad, so sad. You need to make a new, you need to go back up here and, you know, type some more text. All right, it looks pretty good. And in the past, when I've used this font, I've had to do some other tweaking. And I could tell you about some of that other tweaking in a more advanced welding uh, session. And that has to do with removing overlap, um, overlapping the letters some more. But this time, my E and R are behaving. Like, I don't know if it's the update or something with, I, I didn't change the font at all. But I'm, I'm happy my letters are looking better than they did before. And I don't have to do as much tweaking. But we can we can do now the letter or the chef. Go ahead and going to type in C. Okay, and we're going to say, now we're going to go ahead and type in this. H-E-F, okay, so for paper chef. Now, I could weld the C to the H, but I think I might just, well, we'll see. I might make this the P a little bigger and the C a little bigger and weld it. But first, either way, whatever I plan on doing, I need to first weld the H, the E, and the F. Now, if you don't weld the H, the E, the F, or whatever word, of course, you're working with, you're going to get some kinds of, some kind of error message Okay, and I don't want you to get error messages. Just trust me, you need to you need to take the things that are already touching and weld those, okay, together before you try to mess with the C. So go, let's go ahead and do edit, process overlap, and weld. So right now I have everything I need. I'm going to go ahead and line these all up, but I think I'm going to make the C and the F bigger in relation to these because I can't weld it the way it is now because it would touch. See, if it would, it would do some kind of weird thing. So let's do this. Let's let's first align these off. So we're going to take them off. Now remember, I still have two. I have a text layer. I still have two text layers. These are text layers, which I could edit, and these are shape layers. So let's take all of these, and we're going to go over to the edit menu, edit, edit panel. There's a panel, and we're going to align these. Okay, we're going to align these. I'm going to see if I can align these to the bottom. Nope. Let's see. Align these to the center. That might be a little better. I'm going to move the the P and the. So what what I'm doing is I'm I'm horizontally aligning them to the middle of each other. But I'm still going to go ahead and move that. I just wanted to make sure that this part, right? Oops, I already messed it up. This part is aligned with this part. Actually, these I'm going to go ahead and move myself. I'm moving these manually. So I want these two to be aligned, the P and the C. Let's go ahead and align those to the bottom. How about that? And we'll take the chef and the papered and align those two. So you're probably wondering, how is she selecting objects that are not next to each other? What I'm using on my keyboard is the, con I'm using the control key. I'm selecting one object here. It's not connected to this object. I'm using the control key to select those two. I'm holding the control key and then I'm, I can align those. Now I think I want to take this C and I want to make it bigger. I'm doing an eyeball method, and then I'll make the P just as high because I, I don't have to worry about the P yet. I think I'm going to do something like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what I'm doing is the eyeball method. So if I made that that size, 1.25, let's just say 1.25 high, then I'm going to go ahead and make my P 1.25 high. One, and I'll make the whole thing a little bit bigger later, the whole thing. Okay, now we're going to, before I weld the C and the P, let's, let's get these two to align to the bottoms, to each other. I'm using that control key method again. I'm all full of tips and tricks, so sometimes you have to watch my videos over to catch all the different tips and tricks. Because I'm going to be welding the C to the HEF, I need to make my P a little bit closer to the rest of my word. Maybe like that. 
But of course, I'm not going to weld it because it would look funny. But the C would look good connected to the HEF. So now I'm, I'm taking just these two. I'm selecting them with my mouse. I'm selecting the HEF, which was already welded, the C. So now I have two objects, and I'm going to go to Edit, Process Overlap, and Weld. And now I have these two welded, and this P is separate. So now I have only three pieces of vinyl to work with. I'm very happy with this. I want to select everything here, and I'm going to go ahead and make the whole thing about an inch and a half. So right now, my whole when I select everything, the height is 1.43. I'm still in that edit panel, by the way. Let's just go ahead and make it 1.5. The height will change. I mean, sorry, that is the height. I changed it. The width will change in proportion to the height. So the width just changed a little bit. But really, I know now that my... I can't really go with bigger than that on the front of my machine just because the way that the, bro, the word brother's written. Last time I used 1.25, I believe. But the way the word brother's written... It's, it's like I need to be able to fit this on my machine. All right, so let's see. We have 1.5 height. I think I've grouped these. Have I grouped these yet? 1.5 height. I'm going to make sure I maintain aspect ratios. Checked off, and let's see. Now, I haven't grouped these yet. So go to Layer Group. Okay, I just go. You can hit Control-G or just Layer Group, the Layer Menu Group. So now it's all grouped, so that's good. Now I can move everything as one object. All right, so... I should have been saving this earlier. You always save early and often. You know that from my courses, right? I say it all the time. Go up to File, Save, or actually, Save is just when you're going to resave it. Save As because we've never saved it. So go ahead and do Save As, and we're just going to say Paper Chef. I know, don't, you're not going to say Paper Chef, duh. You're going to say um, Sally, Joe, whatever your name is, right? You're going to save it as whatever you whatever you're personalizing your machine as. Now, if you're in my scan and cut user group, I think I'll just make this the challenge, right? That'll be the challenge. And if you've already personalized your machine before, go ahead and take a picture of your brother's scan and cut machine and share it in the thread I start. The challenge is going to be personalize your scan and cut. That'll be the July 2021 challenge. And you have the rest of the month to do it. And I know a lot of you have done it before because you've shared those pictures with me, but now I'm just gonna do a new challenge because I have a new tutorial. And I'd like to make the challenges based on something that I just taught you. All right, so, and there's a link to the Scan and Cut user group in this description of this video. I think I'm ready to send this to my machine. Now, I did wanna make a video on how to connect your machine to the, how your, your Scan and Cut to the software, register your machine. When I got a new machine, I was gonna make that video, but my niece and nephew, begged me to write their names in vinyl and they wanted to personalize their school folders and boxes and all kinds of stuff. So I needed to get it done quickly and I didn't have time to make a tutorial. But my machine is registered. In other words, when I send this paper chef, let me just go ahead and send it. I'm gonna say file, export, transfer, FCM file. Now most of you should already have your machine registered. Okay, so I'm going to say export transfer FCM file, and I'm going to say transfer FCM file via the internet, and it's going to go across my wireless network, and it's going to, this paper chef is going to meet me at my machine. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to cut the file. I'm not going to cut it necessarily right here. Let's go ahead and make the mat smaller. See, it's just kind of randomly in the mat. I will move it once I get, it's a group, so it's one object. I'm going to move it to the place on my mat where I have the vinyl which is probably the whole top half of my mat. But I'll go ahead and move this and cut it. And I will see you in the next part of this tutorial. And the last part of this tutorial we will, where we will cut this out in vinyl. And then we will use transfer tape to apply it to our scan and cut machine. Thank you for watching this section. See you soon. In this section of the tutorial, you will learn how to retrieve the font or the cutting file that you sent over. In, in my case, it's Paper Chef. I sent it to my machine. We're going to retrieve it and cut it out using adhesive vinyl. Adhesive because I'm putting it on my machine. You might be have another kind of vinyl, but I'm using adhesive vinyl. That's the kind that will stick to different things like mugs and machines. Okay, it's not the same as heat transfer vinyl, which is something you would use for clothes. Now, I was going to use this piece here, but see, it got a little crushed. I, I was playing around. My niece and nephew love to personalize. I let them write their names with the machine. 
and they were they were going to town. So I'm just using a piece of white Arteza glossy white, right? 50 per pack premium sheets of vinyl. Now when I went to go look for it today to, to actually get a link for you, it wasn't there. Maybe this, but they had lots of multiple packs of colors. So maybe I'll link to that. It's a good brand. I mean, there's lots of other brands of vinyl, but it's a good brand and I'll link to maybe some other. So what I did is I removed my plastic sheet and I'm just sticking the vinyl on, on my mat. My mat's pretty sticky. I don't want to rub too hard because the back of the vinyl is like sort of a paper and because my mat's still fairly new, well, that came right off though. I guess I do need to rub a little harder than that. Yeah. So much for being sticky. Maybe my mat wasn't sticky very long, but see how this is paper? And so I guess I'll rub a little better. I don't want the vinyl to fall off, but I also don't want that paper to peel off. So you want to get rid of the bubbles. And now we're going to go ahead and load the mat. I'm going to put this like, like so. So anyway, they have, they have other kinds of vinyl, uh, lots of different things. You might get those little rolls. Maybe you have those little rolls that come out like they're like six inches and you can sort of ro roll a piece on top. I personally, I can't stand rolls of vinyl. I mean, I'm going to use transfer tape in a roll, but it just is so hard to work with compared to flat sheets of vinyl. I just got sick of using rolls of vinyl. I've used so, much, so many rolls of vinyl that I was like, I'm going to try to use sheets whenever possible. All right, you know if you follow me for a long time, I used to use rolls, but it came all undone. So what you want to do is you want to turn on your machine, and I'm going to go ahead and load the mat. You saw how I held my hands on the mat, so I'm just going to go ahead and press that button. I'm going to load the mat. Okay, cancel that and just... Okay, so my mat's loading nicely. And now what I want to do is I want to retrieve the file that we're going to cut in vinyl. Retrieve data. See that I'm, I'm connected wirelessly to my router, retrieve data. Here are the places I can retrieve from. The machine, Canvas workspace, this is the internet, a USB stick or from a USB cable to, to connect it directly to my computer. So I want to select this one. I'm retrieving from the network and there's Paper Chef and remember we grouped it. So that's good. Now I just like to, it's just a habit of mine. This, this new machine should cut just fine to the left but for some reason I always like to cut on the top right but you can put this wherever you want to cut it. You can put it over here. Oh, my advice though, never put things too close to the edge of the mat. They're just, it's just too hard to work with. So I'll put it, you know, a little bit farther. I have so much vinyl, I'm not worried about it. But if you want to save vinyl, of course you put it close to the edge. But I'm just going to kind of put it over here. Easier to work with when it's not so close to the edge. I'm going to click on OK. Now, there's an important setting. I'm going to go ahead and click on Select and Cut. There's an important setting when you're cutting vinyl on an SDX machine. So I'm using an SDX 125. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that part. So there is a setting here. Look here, the little wrench. See the little wrench? And I'm going to scroll down. And it's the settings called half cut. You need to use half cut when you're working with vinyl. And you got to turn the half cut on. Half cut means it'll cut through the top part of the vinyl, but it won't cut through the backing of your vinyl. Very important when you're using iron-ons and, you know, the heat transfer vinyl or vinyl that you use half cut. So half cut is on. But then again, make sure you set that back when you're cutting paper later. I mostly cut paper and cardstock. I need to make sure I remember to turn the half cut setting back off so that my paper cuts correctly. Okay, so now what it's determining, it's an auto blade. It's going to determine the depth it needs to go and do the half cut setting. That's what it's doing. And you know, you saw me click whatever I clicked, okay, cut. So you saw all the steps. So that's how to cut the vinyl. So now it's cutting. And what I would need to do is, you know, sort of test it before I pull it all off the machine. So you'll see what I mean. So it says a minute, but it really doesn't take a minute. It sort of, sort of estimates. It goes like in, when it, when it talks about this time, it does it in minute increments. So if it's a little over a minute, it'll say two minutes. If it's a little under a minute, it'll say one minute. So it estimates to the nearest minute how long it's going to take. So what I want to do is it says finish cutting. I'm going to say okay. Now, because you have vinyl and you can't really re reposition this later, if you were to unload your mat and you were to reload your mat, you would never get the same position again. So what I like to do is do a little test before I pull, before I remove this, because if not, I'm going to cut it again and maybe I would turn the half cut setting off. 
if it didn't cut right. So what I'm going to do is peel a little bit of piece of the vinyl off the edge, and it, and it should take my letters with it because I didn't do anything with my little spatula. So I need to use a little spatula in there for a second. This is I'm just using this Stampin' Up spatula. I have a different spatula for applying, but in a minute. But I just want to make sure the F is there. So it, it did work. See what I did? Let's make sure. I got to see if I can see inside the camera view. Okay. See how there's a little, there's the F. So I know that I'm doing this right. I know that it cut correctly. And I can go ahead and get that off now without worrying about it. So in other words, I can unload my mat. So I can unload my mat. That was that button. Let's see. That was that button there. The load and unload. And now I'm done with the machine. But I do want to tell you something about your, if you have a CM model, let's just talk about this for a second. I just, sorry for the shaky camera. There is, I'm trying to show you the blade. This is an auto blade technology because I'm using an SDX machine. So there's no numbers on the blade. If you're using a CM model, I tend to use like a one and a half blade depth when I'm cutting vinyl. There is no uh, half cut setting on a CM machine. So you have to, you have to turn and set your blade yourself and, it's, and I usually use what's called a blade depth of 1.5. You know what that is if you have a CM model. You're used to setting blade depths. So you want to go, you don't want to go too high for, for cutting vinyl. So what I like to do, this is my little tips and tricks for working with vinyl. It's, you're going to say, I know I'm going to get all these people saying, but what about this and why don't you try this? You know what? I've tried a lot of things and, 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 I, and I don't mind getting suggestions, but what I'm saying is there is no right or wrong way. This is what I do because I don't really care if I waste vinyl or whatever. I, what I like to do is I like to just get rid of the sticker that I don't need. It just works for me, right? And then weed it out. So I'm going to, so I'm getting rid of the sticker so that I can work with this part easier. That's just kind of what works for me. I save this though and cl clean up all the glitter and all the little piece of dust all around my, you know, craft table, right? I saved that. And look at the front of my machine's already falling apart. So now, so, so then I can do what's called weeding out the rest. So I can go ahead and get this part off. So in other words, and there's, there's many ways, like, like I said, there's no right or wrong way. Despite what you may, you know, you might learn somewhere, oh, this is the right way. There's no right or wrong way to do anything really in crafting. There's only more efficient ways and less efficient ways. So, of course, I'm always open to suggestions to more efficient ways, but this just seems to work for me and keeps my sanity. I pull out all the excess paper. Then you're going to get a weeding tool. Now, the weeding tool, they, I have a whole set of weeding tools. They're just not with me when I'm traveling. You can use your end of your take your pick tool. You need something sharp or, and I have another suggestion for you. So see how you got to weed these pieces out? You got to get the inside of the words out, these little pieces, or it'll drive you crazy. Now take your extra sticker and stick them on there. Get rid of them or they're going to end up inside your machine and stuck inside your machine to places you can never get them back out because they're a sticker and there's and out other. And they're going to end up God knows where else. Okay. So we want to um, take this for a second and I want to show you that a couple other tricks. I have these things. This is from the Dollar Tree. You can use these little, these little gizmos for weeding. So this whole thing was a dollar, including there were like four of these butterfly nail files emery boards now files there was one of these maybe there are like four of those and this little thing so you can use this little gizmo this little nail thing to help you weed and then the other tip and trick for weeding when you have no weeding tools is my mom's a seamstress see and she lets me use her seam before i before i realized i had this little guy this this little piece right she let me use her her seam ripper so it's called a seam ripper and it actually looks like this kind of thing the seam ripper. So that's how you weed, and you must weed. Don't, don't say, I'll weed later. You can't weed later. Well, you can. I mean, there's no wrong way, but I'm saying you, you can try to weed later. I'm just, I'm just going to use my take your pick if it's real small and that little guy if it's bigger. If you try to get these pieces out after you apply it to something, you're going to scratch your glass, ruin your sticker. You know, it's no big deal. You can always make a new sticker. But I just find it easier to weed first before I apply this to anything. So there we go, the last two bits of weeding. And I hope you're doing this along with me, pressing pause and trying this yourself and personalizing something. And like I said, even if you personalized your machine before, because this is probably, this is the fourth time I've personalized a machine and probably the fourth time, maybe the third time I've done a tutorial on such. And no, maybe the fourth or fifth time, because I actually personalized my sister's machine. We wrote Cindy on hers. I personalized mugs. I've probably done maybe 10 tutorials just on personalizing things, maybe more than 10. 
But anyway, if you've already personalized your machine, you can take a picture of it and submit it for our challenge. We just have fun challenges in our group. All right, so there you go. So now we need a piece of transfer tape. I usually use the Cricut brand, which I'll recommend in the description, but I just happen to have this because I had to get, you know, had to use what I had. And I got this one at Hobby Lobby. I'm not saying it doesn't work as good. It's just that I'm used to using another brand when I've done my other tutorials. But this, this brand is fine. It's called Paper Studio. Hobby Lobby. It's like the Hobby Lobby brand. So let's take a piece. You need a piece of this. This is called transfer tape. You can reuse it, but oh, you should see how much stuff got on it when my, let my niece and nephew tra They use transfer tape. They know how to do it. They use the spatula. They did it all themselves. Well, except the weeding. I did the weeding. Well, they helped me do the weeding, but I made their words a lot bigger. I let them pick their font. They actually, they actually picked their font in the software, the font they wanted to personalize with, and then they, they did it themselves. So what I'm doing is I'm taking, this is like contact paper, right? Except it's transfer tape, so it's not as sticky. Well, I mean, it's sticky, but it comes, it comes off. This is, this is stickier. This is less sticky. So what you're, you can reuse this later. So you're going to take the transfer tape. I just want to make sure you can see everything. So I'm going to load, I'm going to take this piece of transfer tape and I'm going to put it, and you might want to put it so like the lines are, if you want to line up chef, there we go. I mean, I'm going to line, put the line with the paper and the chef. That you don't really have to because I can eyeball it on the machine. So you're going to lay it on top of your vinyl, and now you need to get a different kind of spatula. Now you could use your spatula. You could go ahead and use the spatula that came with the scan and cut. This one would be fine, but I like to use a bigger spatula for this. I like to do this, this thing. I like to really rub it on there. And now I'm going to take this piece of transfer tape, and I'm going to try to get the letters off. And if it doesn't, you don't get a corner, you didn't get it. So if I didn't get the corner, so we'll try this corner. If you don't get a corner, you're, you, can't, you can't do it. You have to get a corner or, there we go. See how I got the F? So if you don't have one of the corners, you've got to get that to work before you try to lift the rest of the tape. So that's why I'm trying to go from this direction. Oh, I didn't get the rest of the C. There I go. I got the rest of the C. Just use your fingernail or use, see, I got, the, I got this, so that's good. I just, there's the rest of the word. Make sure you get the whole word. Peel it slowly, right? Peel it, peel it slowly. And then I'm going to get the P. I didn't get the word, so I'm going to use my spatula in there. There we go. So there we go. So now I got my, now I got everything I need. I even got extra, little hitchhikers, because I made the piece of transfer tape too big. So I got some hitchhikers. Get the hitchhikers off there. You're not supposed to be there, this little piece. And this is not from weeding. This is just from that little piece I cut earlier. So there we go. So that's what you have. And you have papered chef. And now we can put it on to whatever you want to put it on to. Right? You're going to... I'm gonna, I have to make some room, change my camera angle, put my mat somewhere. See that this is great for cleaning up, it's already sticking on things. So what we need to do now is put this on our machine and I need to get all the stuff, see I keep stuff in my little containers. I should be putting stuff in these storage units for all this extra business, right? There. So we'll put the... Oh, we'll keep the spatula out. So now I'm going to shut the front of the machine. And, I, and every time I get a machine, it doesn't, without fail, every time I get an SDX, it just, this rubber comes off. And I, I mean, honestly, I don't know what's going on. I haven't even used it hardly at all. But you know I do a lot of uh, crafting and open up my machine a lot, but what the heck? So it can't just be me. I want to know if this happened to you. And finally, I just kind of pulled it off because it, it came off in my other one. So there's, it sticks back in a little bit, but then finally, if it doesn't keep sticking, I'm just going to pull it off. So what I want to do is take, I'm going to put the paper chef on right under the word brother, and I want to center it under the word brother. So what we will do is, and when, we're going to kind of make sure that C doesn't, do, do, do. right? I'm just, I'm just kind of, you might, you know, I hope you can see that. I'm just going to make sure you can see that. What I'm trying to do is just sort of make sure I'm down low so that I can see it. And I'm taking the lines and I'm, I'm lining up the line under the word brother and making sure my C doesn't touch the word brother. And I think that's going to be good. Okay, so that's where I want it. And now I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to... It's probably shaking the camera. Shake, rattle, and roll. 
All right, so what I'm doing is just trying to get that on there really good. Because it's, it's better to get it on there now while you have this great transfer tape than it is later. If you try to rub this, this spatula over the vinyl itself, or, then you're going to scratch your vinyl. So you want to, if you rub it over the top of this transfer tape, you won't scratch your vinyl. Now before you get the whole transfer tape off, you want to make sure that it's sticking. And it is. So make sure, you know, before you take this off. And I'm moving it slowly. Up, oh, a hitchhiker. And you see what I mean about if we were to cut out all these little pieces separately, how, how they would have all been separate stickers? That's why you need to use the weld inside Canvas Workspace. That's very important. I hope I drove that point home. Now you're going to take this piece of transfer tape and you're going to put it on back on here. I will, I will talk about the one I used, the other ones I recommend, the vinyl I used. I'll try to recommend a different vinyl because, like I said, I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I'll try to, you know, so you can repeat the process. But just use whatever you have and follow along and then personalize your machine and let us know how that goes. So now everybody knows it's your machine and it also is just something fun to look at. It doesn't have to be a name. Go ahead and do the same thing I just showed you. Personalize it with a flower if you want. Personalize it with something else, right? You know, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a word. Just put a sticker on the front of your machine using vinyl. That's what I'd like you to know how to do. All right, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. And I hope you enjoyed today's Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial. And I hope you'll give this a try.